You are worthy of it. Thank you. You are worthy of it. Mm. Thank you. Blessed be God. So here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Mm. Here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Here I am, Lord. Here we are, Lord. I belong to you. We are you. Here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. that to the Father tonight. Here I am, Lord, with all of my heart. Here I am, Lord, with all of my mind. Here I am, Lord, I belong to you. children. Here we are, Lord. We're here for you tonight, God. Here we are, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We belong to you. We belong to you. Here we are. us, God. Here we are, Lord. We will follow you, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We belong to you. We belong to you. We'll make it personal again and say, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Take me as I am, Jesus. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I belong to you. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Take my feet, take my mind, take my eyes, take my hands. Use me, God. Here I am, Lord. I belong to you. One more time. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. We're available to you, God. Here I am, Lord. <laughs> Hear our prayer tonight, God. Hear our prayer tonight, God. As we submit to you in a fresh way, God. As we surrender to you in a fresh way. As we say that we trust you, Lord. We trust you with our very lives, God. You can do more with us than we can do with ourselves. You can do more with our dreams and our goals and our visions and our plans than we could ever do for ourselves or by ourselves. You 
You are our God. And we are your children. The world is chasing after everything else and other things and are putting idols and false gods before you. But we declare tonight as a community, as a collective community saying, you are our God. We are your children. We are your children. Thank you, Lord. Man, listen, tonight is the beginning of our third quarter of the year. And it is also the first Saturday of the month. And so tonight is our Imago Day gathering. Again, if you don't know on ramps, you know, then, then let me just say this, that every Saturday is unique. Okay? And so you see in the back there, you've got the Imago Day gathering, Koinonia, Impact, Covenant. Tonight is our Imago Day gathering, Image of God. That's, that's, that's this, this, this Latin for, 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 for Image of God. Okay? And so it really means this, that it hinders, it sort of, it sort of uh, uh, echoes Genesis 1 and 27, that, that, in the, that, 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 that in His likeness, in His image, we were formed and shaped. You and me, formed in God's image and likeness. And the way in which that looks is that we were formed in His image and in His likeness in the form of a relationship. So it says in Genesis 1 27, right? It says that, it says, uh, in the image of God, He created Him. Male and female, He created them. This is His image. You and me, two different people together in right relationship with one another. So tonight, we'll do spend some time sort of exploring and experiencing and observing His image as we interact with one another a little bit tonight. Third quarter, we're shifting a little bit. So uh, we have been, that right there, that uh, uh, canvas, uh, reflects our vision for on-ramps for 2014. The first quarter was be reconciled to God. Second quarter, be reconciled to ourselves. That was, that's you, being reconciled to you, okay? Now tonight is the first Saturday of the third quarter where we focus on being reconciled to one another. Now that's me being reconciled to you and you being reconciled to the people sitting next to you, okay? So that's what this looks like tonight. Um, let me uh, just dive in and, and we'll get uh, a little bit further. But here's, here's, here's this passage that I want to just point you to, okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. So all this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So God reconciled us to Himself, is reconciling us to ourselves, and at the same time, yes, it's crazy. I know you think, because the world tells you this, that you have to be an expert in all things before you can ever speak on anything. Okay? But can I tell you that in God's kingdom, that God's grace is so great, yeah. that while you are still a work in progress, He can actually use you to save somebody else? Amen. That while you are still a work in progress, God can still use you to actually transform an entire neighborhood? That while you are still imperfect and still making mistakes and still trying to figure things out and you still haven't memorized the whole Bible, that God can still use you even right now? Because His grace is that great. His grace is that great. And so He gives us this ministry of reconciliation, yes, right now. Like there's no excuse. Like right now we are engaged, we ought to be engaged in this ministry of reconciliation. So what does that mean, ministry of reconciliation? Well, uh, I, you know, look, it's my job tonight to sort of set up the next three months. So give me a little bit of, you know, slack, you know, because, because you know, there are like Bible theologians who sit here and there are people who have like been in church for a long time and you've known a lot of Christians, all that kind of stuff, you know. So I'm just going to kind of go as quickly as I can through this stuff. And I know it's deeper and I know that y'all smart and all that kind of stuff. But just give me a little bit of grace, all right? So, uh, look, to be reconciled, reconcile. Okay, so uh, so conciliare in the Latin it means to bring together. Re means back. Okay, so uh, let me say it in my way, which is to reconcile. Then is to bring together again. 
or to bring back together. Does that make sense? Amen. So at one point, something was together. It no longer is together. But to reconcile means to bring it together again. You following me? Yeah. Okay. So in the very beginning, right, this is where this entire theme and vision for 2014 comes. Be reconciled. Okay? Comes from ultimately Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Where ultimately sin enters the world and, and basically takes what was together and separates it. Okay? And so what is separated? Well, our relationship with God was separated. And so God reconciled us to Himself. Our relationship with ourselves was separated. We're fractured from ourselves. Do you know... How many of you know that you're still trying to discover who you are? Amen. Like you're still Amen. learning something about yourself. Right? I mean, I know, like, especially when you're in your 20s, you think you got you figured out pretty good. But no, no, no. When you get older, you just realize you don't know. You didn't know you. Come on, you know, Pastor. You didn't know you. But you told everybody who you were. You know? And then you got to go back and apologize to everybody and say, I'm sorry. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Let me introduce you to the real me. You know? And so, and, so, and so God has been reconciling us, bringing us back together to ourselves. Right, Jamal? And then... Also in Genesis chapter 3, God, uh, uh, Satan separates us from one another. Right. Okay? And so, God's reconciling us, bringing us back together. And the fourth quarter, it's not up there yet, because we ain't there yet. Fourth quarter, God, uh, Satan also separated us from the rest of creation. Hmm. And the fourth quarter, we'll dive into that. Because God is reconciling all things has reconciled all things to himself through Christ Jesus. And so he is reconciling us now to the rest of creation. All right? So that's what that means in short. Y'all follow me so far? Yes. Amen. All right. So, so here we go. So in the third quarter, if the, if the question is be reconciled to one another, okay, so now it's for the third quarter, focused on recon, being reconciled to one another. The question then is this. For yourself. Now, I'm talking to you. Who are you being reconciled to? Who, in this third quarter, do you need to be reconciled to? Who in your life, you were together, your relationship was good, something happened, something happened, and you are apart, no longer together. But God said, this quarter, I want to bring you together again. I want to mend that relationship. I want to make what was together and was good, good again. Does it have to be the same kind of relationship with that person? No, it doesn't have to be the same kind of relationship. But y'all don't have to be talking about each other on Facebook all the time either. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be like that. You see them, you see them, you see them, you see them at the bus, you know, on the bus, uh, uh, on the bus, and, and you get on the bus because you gotta be somewhere, you gotta be at work, you know what I'm saying? And then obviously you get on the bus, you see them, you walk back off the bus. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'll just be late today. You know what I mean? You be late. I mean, if that's how it is, you know what I'm saying? If that's how it is, you know, God wants to do some reconciling work in your life. Okay? All right? Between you and and that person. But maybe it's not just an individual. Maybe it's actually a group of people. Come on. Pastor. Right? Maybe it's a group of people. Maybe it's a particular group of people. That you just feel like there's a little bit of something between you and them. Maybe it's, maybe it's members of your family. Not just a family member. Maybe it's a lot of family members. Right? Or what if it's even between you and a neighborhood in our city? Or what if it's even between you and an entire city? What if you have such a bad experience or have had such a bad experience in a city that you just really hate that city now and you refuse to go back? Maybe God wants to reconcile you to others this quarter. So the first question is, reconciled to who? And this is what I want you to do. I'm just going to give you a few minutes of silence. And I want you to think about that. I'm sure you've already been thinking about it. But I'm just going to stop talking. And I want you to think about who does God want you reconciled to this quarter. Why are you here? Why? 
why would God have you at all? So that you would hear this message about being reconciled for the next three months to others. That's the question. So I want to give you an opportunity now to pair up. I just want you and one other person. Okay? I want you to pair up with some other person. But everyone needs a partner. Okay? Pair up with somebody. If it has to be three of you, that's fine. Okay? I don't really want you necessarily, you don't have to say who. Okay? And it may be a list of people. And that's fine. Okay? I, you don't necessarily say who. Really what I want you to talk about is the second question, okay? What makes it so hard mm -hmm. to be in relationship with that person or those people? I want you to talk about that, okay? So with that person in mind, I want you to answer this question with someone else who you're sitting next to, okay? So partner up, get in threes if you have to, and let's spend a few minutes talking about what makes reconciliation so hard. So, so I, I'm not looking for you to, to, to put all your business out there. So I'm not looking for you to tell me, you know, all the stuff that you know, whatever. But just kind of, kind of give me the, give me a couple of thoughts about you know what, what, what are some barriers to reconciliation? Why is it hard to be in relation with that person again? You had a relationship. What happened? Uh, pride and ego. Pride and ego. I would say pride. Pride. Um, being rejected when you tried to oh, reconcile. Oh, uh, so I tried to be. I tried to reconcile. I was rejected. That that makes it hard to try again. Doesn't it? Yeah. Um, old generation versus new generation. Old generation, new generation, different cultures, different language, different everything. Right? Don't get it. Yeah. Being exposed to continued hurt. Continued hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's one thing to be hurt once. It's another thing to be hurt hurt repeatedly. Right? And then, and then try to engage that relationship mm. by people who keep hurting you? Mm. Hard. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. 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 Any other, any, anyone else? Seeing your own faults in the other party. Oh. Wow. So, so well, uh, so say more about that. Now, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. Go ahead. What you got? Dan. It's kind of like looking in the mirror. Oh, it's kind of like looking in the mirror. Yeah. So, so, in order for me to talk to this person, about our relationship, I need to face my own stuff. And that's hard. Good. Who else had their hand up? I saw somebody else. I said, I was thinking about, like, when there's a lot of, especially if it's been years of um, passion between the two of you, yes. if there was a lot of resentment and hostility, a lot of that has to unfold first yeah. before you're able to actually sit down and talk. So sometimes that makes a barrier. If those emotions are raw and present, like it happened yesterday, when it happened five years ago, but it still feels like yesterday. The resentment's there, all that stuff's still there. You gotta kinda work through that before maybe you can have that conversation. Yeah. For me, that's not really necessarily the hard part, just, just the hard part is you know, trying to reconciliate with um, someone you know that's not sincerely sorry about it. That, yeah, yeah. How do you reconcile with somebody who doesn't even want to be reconciled? Right? Environmental differences. Um, okay. uh, um, neighborhood. Uh, uh, um, let's just say gangs. Uh, yep. um, I was taught never to hate your enemy, but to hate what they stand for. That in itself is very powerful because uh, 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 it's harder to reconcile that way. Right, because you're hating something that someone stands for, and you know, and, and it's just like war between countries. You don't hate the person, you hate what they stand for. So how can you reconcile that? How can you reconcile? I mean, let's just bring it to home. How can you reconcile 
uh, uh, two different neighborhoods from two different gangs mm. who are taught mm. that they are different. Mm. They stand for something totally different and because of that, we will never see eye to eye. Mm. So, so that's the, that's the final statement, it's the last one, is kind of the key on that, right? Is that how do you reconcile with people who you know you will never see eye to eye with, right? That's, that's, that's the question, right? So do we have to agree to be reconciled? That's another question, isn't it? Yeah, those are, those are good questions. Go ahead, that's Brie. the question I had. Yeah, I was like telling us, so it's like, how, what if you never agree? Like, are you really reconciled? Yeah, it's a great question. Exactly. Good questions. Hey, I've got one more for you. You ready? All right, so here's, here's, here's my last question for you, okay? Why does reconciliation matter? Oh. So, so here, here's what I'm getting at, okay? All of these things make reconciliation hard, okay? The question is, why do we even worry about it? Mm. Why are we even going to be, why are we even going to do it? Why would we even try? Why does it even matter? So, back to your groups, okay? Wanna, uh, All right, let's hear what you said. Why does this matter? Why don't we just say, chuck the relationship, I'm done with it, I don't want it, I don't need it, okay? Why does this matter? Never have peace in your life. Wow. Okay, who else? Uh, it's a chance to be complete. You can't be necessarily complete if you're stuck in broken relationships. So when you, when you break relationship, you leave a part of yourself with that person. They leave, they leave a part of themselves with you. And so it's just better to stay complete. Okay, okay, opportunity to be complete. Who else? It's, um, it's more than just, oh, like, it's not a thing that, it's not like, all oh, this. it's not like something you could pass up, like, all, oh, like, let's say, for instance, for phones, you could come buy a phone, you could just go to the store and buy another one, but it's not something like that, it's, it's far, farther than that, it goes more than that, it's the way you are, it's, uh, feelings get involved, you're in the flesh, so you just, like, it's everything, it's, it goes beyond the way you live, like, the way you live, the way you talk, the way you feel, how you go on with your life, it's all, it, like you said, it's, it's something that happens, 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 and it, it needs more and more and more, and it'll never be, um, how do you say, it? it'll never be closed, it'll never be a, a closed book. Mm -hmm. You always stay open, you always stay guessing or feeling, or, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Kenny, I'm sorry. I just think that no matter the situation, it needs to be all kind of, just like mm -hmm. the person, or like you said, the city, or any sort of things in life, or all these different things. It's like, for, it's not together. And you said, like, you should be reconciled with yourself, you should be together. And if, um, I think it matters to be whole because, yeah. it, you know, that's how you bring, that's how you become whole, complete together. I don't know. That's awesome. That's great. Who else had some ideas? You guys have a Oh, I forget exactly who said it. I think it was one of the Catholic saints who said this. Um, but she said, you only love God as much as the person you love least. Mm. And for me, reconciliation is a matter of how much do you love that person or that group? Do you love them enough to risk your ego? Do you love them enough to risk yourself for them, for the relationship? Did y'all hear that quote? Say it again, Mike. You only love God as much as the person you love least. Some of Google that while we're scrolling. Going around <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what scripture it is. We're saying that, you know, God is asking, like, how could you love me and you've never, never met me, right? but yeah. you can't love the person that's yeah. here with you that you spend yeah. time with all the time. That's, yeah. awesome. that's like what you're saying. Like, ooh, that makes me feel bad. <laughs> 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 I don't know why y'all like coming to Augury. I said, y'all are coming out here really bad. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, like good day talk. Why don't you try? <laughs> uh, you know, good. What you got? Um, you know, as we were talking in the weekend and we're having this discussion, I kind of feel like it's one of those moments where it just reminds me of when I was younger and when my mom would tell me to do something and I always had that and I always got that because I said so answer. 
Mm. And I feel like that's exactly the what fits in this what fits for the answer to this question. It's kinda like you ask God why should I why does this matter? And I just feel like it's him saying because I said so. <laughs> so I just Yeah, that's really what stuck out to me yeah, when I seen that's that. Good. But implied in that is a trust in God's word, right? And that if God said so, even if I don't want it, or even if I don't fully understand it, right? Because God said it, I I trust Him, right? Yeah, good. Uh, in the back. Uh, I just think, as KD was saying, that when you bring the pieces together, to add on, when you bring the pieces together, it demands growth as an individual also. And that person initially is the leader of whatever emptiness that person was holding inside. Mm -hmm. So when the when you come when you go back to that person, like I say, it, it demands uh, growth, but also it builds character. Uh, for in my situation, it was pride and ego. So me to uh, initiate that, it gives me a role of a leadership, but more uh, of what can I do for this person that cannot do nothing for me. Hmm. And so that, what that, you know, brings upon, so. Awesome, good. Uh, just to tag on with what Jordan was saying, uh, you know, because, God, because God said so, but he also gave us an example in Christ because yeah. all that he went through, you know, I've gone through things and tried to reconcile, but we were, but Christ got spit on, beat and everything else, and he still, he could have struck every, any one of those people down. He could have not gone as far as and died for us, but we knew that he had to do that because his father said so. Yeah. And so he gave the example as a man that we are. So we can, I haven't gone through that. I, that'd be hard, I mean, honestly. But he showed us an example of how even going through all that, he was still reconciled to us. It's good. It's good. Anyone else want to share? Last thoughts. Um, yes. I think that um, we were talking about a couple weeks ago about connectedness. And how yes. We're all made to connect. And, and sexuality. Yeah. And, and when you don't have a um, connection with somebody, as we're trying to be, you know, closer to God and and, and calling ourselves Christians and thinking out our lives that everything else we're okay in, but in the back of our minds, the people that we haven't been able to reconcile with. We will always remember there's something else that's not resolved yet. You know, I'm ministry and I'm telling these people that they need to do this and this and this, yet I have this relationship over here that's a mess. I have this relationship over here that I don't even want to deal with because it's so messy. You know what I mean? So it keeps us torn inside that we can't give ourselves fully because we don't want to see this other stuff. So that's why it matters because we, without it, we will be completely Torn inside without having those connections. That's great. Good work. Good work. But, yes. Can we ask you a question then. So I may not answer. <laughs> <laughs> so in, yeah. in dealing with this, because you you try to reconcile and you do yeah. reject it, yeah. so you do have this constantly yeah. Yeah. coming up again and the hurt yeah. coming up again and the incompleteness continually. Yeah. What do you do? Because. Yeah. So I'm not gonna answer that because <laughs> we got three what months. months. We got three months to talk, about, talk about. You know, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, honestly, no, honestly, all the listen, all these questions that y'all raised and, and 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 all the barriers that you sort of you know listed or lifted up, those those are fully legitimate. They are really good questions, and those are really legitimate obstacles to reconciliation. They are real. Okay, and so we need to, so we're going to deal with that in the next few months, okay? Because ultimately, this must, right, reconciliation is not a choice for us, mm. right? So so here's here's where I'm going to go. Uh, do you, you want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. Pastor Phil, why does reconciliation matter to you? Well, good. That's a great question. Get in my notes, man. Get in my notes. Look, look, look. Here's why I'm asking me. Here's why I'm asking me. I don't like y'all asking me questions. Uh, uh, put y'all in children's ministry. Uh, 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 They're reconciling right now. Right, right, right. right. Talk about that right. Uh, here's why it matters to me. Here's why it matters to me. Okay, so uh, kind of to Diosha's point, okay? So, um, it matters to me because of 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Okay? 
It's one of the reasons it matters to me. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Now I'm going to come back fully to Deoxys' point in just a second. Okay? Here's another scripture for you. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud. Kind of sound like some of the things y'all were talking about, right? That we wrestle with. Abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And I'm sure that each of you could add many other things to that list. Right? Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. To Diosha's comment, for me, personally, why it matters to me. The kingdom of God, following Jesus for me, is not a matter of talk, but of power. It is not about having a form of godliness. You can name so many people who associate themselves with God, but at the end of the day, you know and I know that they really, frankly, I mean, they'll cut you in a second. Mm. You know? And, 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 I mean, cut you verbally, cut you physically, they'll do whatever. They'll steal your bicycle, Jordan. I mean, whatever. Right? But they, but, they, but they would associate themselves, they would affiliate themselves with God. I don't say that to point fingers. Because the same is true of us. But may we be on a trajectory, a deepening relationship with God. Yeah, yeah. That whatever form of godliness we carry that is not evidenced by the power of God, may that become less and less in our lives over the course of time. Over these next three months, may that become less and less. That we may actually see the power of God in our lives. To Diosha's comment, uh, Diosha basically said there's this disconnection thing, right? There's a splitting in people's lives. And we experience this. Where it's like I have people in my lives who the relationships are so damaged, they're so hurtful, they're so painful, that I move forward without reconciling to those individuals. Yeah. And just sort of, and here's what we do. We move forward asking and expecting God to demonstrate His power in our lives in other areas, but we've never given Him the opportunity to demonstrate His power in our relationships with others that have been so damaged and broken. And so for me, I think that's one of the reasons that we don't see His power demonstrated in our lives in other areas. Because we don't believe that, we think He has power for that, but not power for this. That's good. And the reason we're avoiding that is because that is painful and this is glorious. Mm. Wow. So I want that to happen because that's all, that just makes me all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> if God would do that, I'd be super excited. But that back there, I don't want to see Him do anything. It's sort of the whole Jonah Nineveh thing, right? Mm. Like I don't want to see God actually believe, like, like embrace the repentance of the Ninevites who I hate anyway. Mm. <laughs> right? Wow, wow. And, so, and so Jonah wants to see God's power active in other areas of his life, but he refuses to give God an opportunity to demonstrate his power in reconciling him to the Ninevites. Yeah. And so it is with us. We have relationships that are so damaged, they're so painful, they're so wow. hurtful, that have been so difficult, that cause us to sweat drops of blood. That we just leave them behind. And God says, I want to show you my power. The kingdom of God is not about talk. It's about power. And so the power of the gospel, are you not excited then? Here's the deal. We led with this passage out of 2 Corinthians 5 that God is giving us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given that ministry to us. Does it make you excited that you are the very people that, that God has chosen, that He's selected, that He's handpicked ultimately to bring about healing in our world. So that people don't have to continue the rest of their lives to avoid and to run from all the pain in their lives. 
You have the ministry of reconciliation. God has selected you. You are part of that movement. Think about what you are part of. You are part of a movement that's bringing healing to our world. You are part of a movement that's not just bringing healing to our world, but also God wants to bring healing to your world. I don't know what else you want to give your life to. You want to give your life to something that's just going to continue to create chaos and create pain and create hurt? Is that what you want to give your life to? Or do you want to give your life to a movement? To the one who said, I am bringing, I am reconciling all things to myself through Jesus Christ. And now I'm giving you that same reconciliation movement. That's your ministry. So for me, the power of the gospel is not that people get together every weekend to talk about a God who saves. The power of the gospel for me is that God actually saves. Yeah. That's the power of the gospel for me. Yeah. Is that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him would not perish but would have everlasting life. And that this everlasting life that is in you and is in me wouldn't just make us happier people. Huh. Yeah. But it's so powerful that when we are on our mission, and I didn't say that, when we are on our mission, when we are on our mission, it brings peace to violent city streets. It, it, yeah. it, it restores broken friendships and yeah. it heals dysfunction in our families. Yeah. Let me remind you again, the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, and if you spend any time around honor him, you hear us quote this all the time. Mm -hmm. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, yeah. above all we can ask or imagine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to the power that is at work in us. According to His power that is working through us. The kingdom of God is not about talk, yeah. but it is about actual, demonstrable, evidential power. And if we are not seeing His power, then it's because we are not releasing it. Uh. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or even fathom. According to His power that is at work through us. If we are not seeing His power, then it's because we are not releasing it. Welcome to the third quarter of being reconciled <laughs> to one another. Ouch. If you are still running from relationships where there is pain and hurt and tons of damage and emotional baggage. Wow. And you want God to demonstrate His power over yonder. Wow. But not over hither. <laughs> God says, I am the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or even imagine. But it's according to my power that's at work through you. If we're not seeing His power, it's because we are not releasing it. That's why we call this the good news. Because it is good news to all who would believe that pain doesn't just have to continue. And that hurt doesn't just have to be something we carry with us to the grave. And that we ultimately don't have to just run the rest of our lives from people that we cannot stand. Mm. It's why we call it good news for our world. It's why it's called the gospel. Mm. Yeah. So I want to leave you with this passage here. Uh, how are we doing? Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Doing good? Not okay. All right. That's good. <laughs> it's going to be a tough three months. Yeah, yeah. It's a great three months. And what we know about God is that when we start talking about this stuff in ours, first of all, let me say this. It would not surprise me in the least if God's been stirring up some old hard relationships in your life already in preparation for this very quarter. Okay? And so if that's begun to happen to you already, just know that you're in the right place. Okay? Uh, and, and, and just know that God has done that, not for the purpose of bringing new pain into your life, yeah. but He's yeah. doing that to demonstrate His power. Yeah. Power yeah. of reconciliation. Yeah. Okay? Alright? And so here we are, third quarter. Here's our guiding scripture for the quarter. John 13, 34 and 35. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. One another. It's all inclusive. 
Not love some people, not love those who are currently in your life or will be in your life. Yes, it also includes those who are previously in your life. If you love one another. Alright? And so, uh, this is going to be the scripture that we'll come back to over and over again. In Matthew 22, Mark 12, Luke 10, Jesus says it a little bit differently. He basically says this. Uh, this is the greatest commandment. If you love your Lord your God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, it's the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? In John chapter 13, he says it this way. Okay? Uh, three requirements of reconciling relationships. This is how we're going to frame the next three months. Tonight and the rest of this month, we'll be talking about grace. Grace must be present. So here, here's some of the answers to some of your questions, right? Okay? Grace must be present in a relationship that's being reconciled. We'll talk about that. Okay, This month, month of July, we'll be talking about grace. In August, we're talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness must be present <laughs> in a relationship that's being reconciled. Woo! There's a whole lot of home. Man, there about to be like three of us left. You know, I'm out of town. I'm out of town next week. I just got a call. They need me in Europe. I, you know, uh, yeah, that guy's here. Yeah, right. So, uh, uh, and then, and then September. There must be maturity. We're going to define that for you. That's okay, maturity uh, in, uh, in order for a relationship to be reconciled. Okay, so we're going to define these things. Uh, I want to just uh, present to you this passage as we leave tonight. We begin to baptize two people. I'm excited to baptize Elaine and Vanessa tonight. John chapter 8 says this, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. I love this passage, this story. It's told in, 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 the, in the Gospel of John because it really represents all three of those characteristics that must be present in reconciling relationships. Grace, forgiveness, and maturity. Watch this. John chapter 8. You'll read it some more when you get home. Keep reading. When Jesus went to the Mount Olives, at dawn He appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around Him and He sat down to teach them. Jesus is hanging out, getting ready to have class. The teachers of the law of the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. My goodness. They made her stand before the group. Can you see the scene? Isn't that something? They sit around. Jesus is about to have class. They bring a woman in who is caught in adultery. They make her stand in front of everybody. Cold-blooded. Said to Jesus, Teach of this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? Now they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down. Didn't say much. Just started writing in the sand with his finger. When they kept on questioning, Jesus, what do you say? Jesus, what do you say? What shall we do with this woman who we have caught in adultery and the law clearly says that we should stone her? What are you going to do, Jesus? He straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he went silent and started drawing in the sand. At this, those who heard began to leave one at a time. The older ones first until only Jesus was left. The whole class was dismissed, apparently. Okay. <laughs> With the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up, stopped doodling in the sand, and he asked her, Woman, where'd they go? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. And neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. Grace in this passage. Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. They began to leave. Forgiveness. Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir. Then neither do I condemn you. Maturity. Go now and leave your life of sin. Mature. Grace. Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. In this book, True Face, that these authors wrote, they wrote this about grace. They said, in the room of grace, no one is above anyone else. No one brags about his or her accomplishments. 
No one keeps score. No one is shunned. No one can lose membership for blowing it. The room is not a utopian ideal. It is a home where people live together. Wow. Grace. Grace. If any one of you who is accusing this woman is without sin, you throw the first stone. And they left. Because we don't keep score when there's grace present in our relationships. You can't blow it so bad that we would start to stone you. Because there's grace in our relationships. This month we're going to be talking about grace. I'll leave you with this last quote from that same book. Reminds me of on ramps. Reminds me of our mission. Reminds me of what we are about. Why we exist. Because grace heals. Grace matures. Grace reconciles. And unleashes the love of God through people. Yeah. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly above you of all you can ask or imagine. According to the power of God that is at work through us. And the community. This is on ramps. This is you and me together. Of broken healers. You hear that? Broken healers. You and me. That describes us. We're broken, but we're healers. Mm. Becomes more beautiful by the day. Mm. So finally, the question is sort of ponder as you go through the month of July. We won't answer it tonight. I don't know when you'll answer it. What does grace look like then? in the relationships in which you need reconciliation. Or we don't keep score. No one can blow it so bad that you get kicked out or shunned. Hmm. What does that look like? How is God calling you to demonstrate that grace in these relationships? I'm going to go back to this last time, the last time for you to see. What does that look like in the relationships where you need reconciliation with other people? How do you live that out? Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for this night. Thank you, God, for the ways in which you have prepared us for this evening. Bringing to memory people who sin has caused us to be <clears throat> fractured in our relationships. God, that doesn't please you. And it hurts us. I see the pain. I feel the pain in this room as we think about and reflect and begin to conjure up the memories of people, the names of people, fragrances of people. who have caused us harm and who we have harmed. Now God, we submit all of this to you. We submit it all to you. Be every one of these relationships we just submit at your feet. We submit our lives to you. We submit our thoughts to you. We submit our emotions to you. And say, God, would you be easy with us? Would you walk slowly with us? God, we're going to grab your hand. But God, take us to the pace that we can handle. Where we can begin to live with a new measure of grace toward this person or these people in our lives. Where we would be able to, you would usher us into a place where our heart could forgive. Where our minds could forgive and that we and perhaps even they God would move into a place of new maturity in you over these next few months and beyond may you change the course of every broken relationship in our lives over the next three months for the rest of our lives 
May we be able to lead others into reconciling their relationships because of the next three months gone. That we would begin to introduce ideas of grace, God, that comes from you. That you define forgiveness that comes from you and you define that maturity comes from you and you define. God, may we be able to introduce this to others who are really still from the pain of past broken relationships and even current relationships. God, use us as broken healers in the lives of our friends and our families, our communities, and our city. We give you glory and thanks, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, hey, listen, we're going to head out back, okay? Uh, we're, we're wrapping up. We're going to baptize Elena and Vanessa right now. And then they have generously, they have generously provided for us tonight a wonderful meal. In the night. Yeah. All right, family. So, uh, listen, I've asked Gabe to read Romans chapter 6. Katie. Katie. Romans chapter 6, okay? And just say a couple words about our sister Elena, all right? Uh-oh. Katie's going to read it. Okay. What are you doing? Don't drink that one. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We die to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into the death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live in a new life. Gabe, talk a little bit about baptism. What does this mean? And then uh, share a few words about Lena. All right. Well, you take your hand. I just want to say that it's a privilege and honor to be here to be a part of this. I thank you for inviting me and I thank you for... Um, just the person that you've been in my life. I thank you for sharing <clears throat> your grandsons and your granddaughter with me and encouraging me with words um, that just blow me away beyond anything that I can express to you. So I thank you for that. Um, just want to say that it, um, this is a, a public profession of your faith. Um, you're saying to the world that you choose Christ over Amen. Um, Amen. You're with your family now. You're, you're going to become a part of a bigger family. Um, we are going to hold you accountable. And I gotta, I gotta say that. Remember when I first met you? You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight out on it. You know me. I ain't gonna lie about you that. You scared him. You scared me. But the great thing is, is that voice that you used to have for the world. Uh, I'm gonna challenge you to have that same voice for Christ. Amen. That same tenacity Amen. For Christ. That same argument that you had for the world. I want you to argue for Christ. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Amen. That's awesome. Good. 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 So Elena, it's a big night for you. One thing you need to know about Elena is Elena is moving to Carmen, okay? And uh, it's a big move for her, all right? And so I don't know that we're going to see her a lot, okay? And, you know, we hope to, okay? But uh, we're going to be praying for her, all right? And, uh, and she knows where we are, and uh, you have our support, okay? All right. So, Elena, uh, like Pastor Gabe said, okay, this is a public profession. You're just saying I'm choosing... Jesus over everything else, okay? I'm living my life for Him, okay? When I don't know what to do, I go to Him, all right? So let me just ask you, okay, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. And do you want to be baptized? All right. Ready, Elena? Okay. So you can, you can plug your nose if you want. You can cross your arms. It's perfect, just like that. There you go. Okay? So Elena, our dear Elena, because you have professed Jesus as your Savior and Lord, because you have also communicated your desire to be baptized, it is with great pleasure, it's an honor, for myself and Pastor Gabe to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here we go. Okay? Incredible. I don't know if you can remember when Jesus changed your life. Like when you really grabbed a hold of his love for you, right? Isn't it amazing? This is a newer journey for Elena. And God's doing amazing things in her life. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for her. Amen. So Vanessa's coming. In case you don't know, 
uh, this is uh, this is Elena's daughter. Okay. And so uh, a few months ago, we baptized Elena's grandson, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. At this yeah. park. Yep. Last year was Mario. And, and then and last year. And Mario as well. And so uh, when I tell you, okay, that God will use you. When we talk about reconciliation, that God will use you not just, He's not just interested in changing your life. <coughs> he wants to change your life. That's because He wants to use you to change other people's lives. Amen. God will use you to change your whole family. Okay? And so here is amazing Vanessa. Alright? <coughs> so Vanessa, I asked, um, I asked Pastor Sam to talk a little about you and share some words about you. Okay? Sam, where are you at? <coughs> Not just because you help in children's ministry, and you are so great at what you do. Um, you are, there's something special about you, Tessa, and I am just blessed. And I know that your kids love you, and I see just so much growth in these over these past few months. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear Vanessa. Dear Vanessa. Okay? You are an amazing woman. Amazing daughter of God. Okay? And it is a privilege for Pastor Sam and I to baptize you tonight. Okay? Before we do that, I want to ask you, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. And do you want to be baptized? Yes. Wonderful. It is amazing to baptize now three generations in one family. Isn't that incredible? It's incredible. You can cross your arms maybe like this. Plug your nose if you want to. Alright? Alright, Vanessa. Pastor Sam and I tonight, it's our absolute honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 